Mankind is in a rush towards dictatorship. From Martinus about democracy and communism. Philosophical systems of thought and points of view have not succeeded in giving humanity the necessary spiritual insight to prevent a massive onrush towards the abyss of totalitarianism and dictatorship, a situation in which all current states find themselves, no matter what they may call this plummet or their physical and mental fate at this moment in time, whether they designate their present condition democracy or communism. Both of these concepts began intentionally as excellent theoretical ideals, but they did not last because of an invisible power that people are not yet aware of. This power inevitably forces all current political systems, both in the West and the East, both in the South and the North, to become more and more dictatorial. This dictatorship robs humanity of liberty, which deprivation creates hatred, a desire for deliverance from slavery, and tendencies to revolt against the system. These in turn force a dictatorship where politicians in power must maintain a growing police force, both overt and covert, a growing bodyguard that has to execute so many arrests that ordinary prisons are not sufficient. They therefore have to resort the so-called concentration camps, a collection of temporary huts behind barbed wire fences, watchtowers, armed guards, torture and gas chambers, together with other sadistic whims and inventions. To such a degree that, beyond this point, all hope is lost. For those unhappy ones who ended up there, through their rightful claims to liberty. Yes, these concentration camps have been revealed long ago as mental and physical cancer tumors in our planet's physical matrix of mankind, releasing the most terrible sadistic tendencies in those individuals who are this hell world's tormentors and slave drivers. It is useless to believe that all countries or states today are not in this plunge towards a sadistic hell which must wind up in the destruction of all culture on earth, assuming people to do shift their current democracy and communism away from the false cause of which heaven weeps that is in recent decades their intellectual blindness has led them to swear to. What true democracy and true communism can never be and what they really are. Democracy and communism cannot be states of ruthless persecution and enslavement of the individual and the follow-up development of a tyrannical, ugly power centered on a self-appointed ruling minority clique and its henchmen. Democracy and communism cannot be states that maintain themselves with the help of all kinds of modern gangster methods, by merciless and ruthless tax theft, by the sudden neglect of all rights of ownership, by creating such a flood of restrictions that the individual can no longer buy a sock or shirt without obtaining permission from that dictatorship. Furthermore, it cannot remain a democracy or communism and sustain its political or national structure as an oppressive, undermining yoke on every personal initiative and talent 
through the ruthless trying up and deprivation of those fruits. Democracy and communism cannot be tyrannical structures of state that give no protection whatsoever to the individual. Equally, democracy and communism cannot be structures that force everyone to turn into informers against others so as to protect themselves. How can permanent peace come into being in such systems that seem to culminate in a hatchet job, a breathing ground for the lowest, most bestial tendencies of humanity. It is not so strange that the political structure of current humanity cannot be either true democracy or communism. These two political ideals can only make up part of one and the same thing, namely an all-embracing, lasting world peace. What is not real peace cannot possibly be dem democracy or communism. True democracy and communism can solely and exclusively be structures of a state, of a political system that guarantees the individual his full personal freedoms and all fruit of his talents and useful productivity. They would be parts of a system that protects the individual against every form of tyranny and exploitation by others. A system in which the most distinguished task would be to find out what kind of talents are hidden in every single person born in this world, thereby guaranteeing that citizen, that citizen the highest development and education of those same talents, knowing that this is the only way every individual will become the most beneficial and bring the greatest happiness to himself and to the state. Thus, it is a system based on human abilities and talents instead of money and gold. It would be a system based on understanding that the state consists of individuals, and the more fruitfully these individuals' talents and abilities would be cultivated, the greater the perfection in spirit and culture, the more blessings for its citizens that state could boast of. How democracy and communism have become the opposite of what they were intended to be. Real democracy and communism are, in just the same way, the exact opposite of existing political systems today, the world over. Today every state government has become a power elite, more or less open or camouflaged. Of, dictator, of dictatorial authority and display, while to a corresponding degree the rest of the citizenry, more or less openly or camouflaged, is slave-bound by the aforementioned power elite. Under the rule of this power elite, individuals are left without any protection whatsoever, to the same extent that this elite acquired dictatorial authority. Such political systems cannot promote peace, but war instead. That is obvious. The fact that in so-called democratic countries there happens to be a right to vote or freedom of election has not secured a governmental form that could remove these dictatorial restrictions, commands, interventions in the rights of ownership and private financial circumstance as we see enforced